Hello everyone, this is Jane Almoraje of Group 11. I'm from Ginhadap Elementary School. The topic assigned to us are the two basic rules of probability and contingency tables. Before we start the first topic, let us first define the objectives. Calculate probabilities using the addition rule and multiplication rule. Use contingency tables through probability problems and other examples. And to discuss on the two rules of probability, we have Mamelani Ramos Obaldo from Ginhadap Elementary School. Let us first define the word probability. The word probability is the measure of the likelihood that an event will occur in a random experiment. Probability is defined as a number between 0 and 1, representing the likelihood of an event happening. A probability of 0 indicates no chance of that event occurring, while a probability of 1 means the event will occur. If you are working on a probability problem and come up with a negative answer or an answer greater than 1, you've made a mistake. Go back and check your work. When calculating probability, there are two rules to consider when determining if two events are independent or dependent, and if they are mutually exclusive or not. They are a number of ways to visualize probabilities, but the easiest way to think about them is to use the fraction method. Turn the terms into fraction by dividing the number of desirable outcomes by the total number of possible This will always give you a number between 0 and 1. For example, what are the chances of ruling an odd number on a six-sided die? There are a total of six numbers and three odd numbers, 1, 3, and 5. So, the probability of ruling an odd number is 3 over 6 or 0 0.5. You can use this formula when performing more difficult calculations. As well, see you later in the... In this formula, P of A is read as the probability of A, where A is an event we are interested in. P of A and B is read as the probability of A given B occurs. P of not A is read as the probability of not A, or the probability that A does not occur. Let us discuss the two basic rules of probability, the multiplication rule and addition rule. First is the multiplication rule, where P of A and B is equal to P of A times P of B or A, or P of B times P of A or B. If A and B are independent events, we can reduce the formula to P of A and B is equal to P of A times P of B. The term independent refers to any event whose outcome is not affected by the outcome of another event. For instance, <coughs> consider the second of two coin flips, which still has a 0.50 or 50% probability of landing heads, regardless of what came up on the first flip. What is the probability that, during the two coin flips, you can come up with tails on the first flip and head on the second flip? Let's perform the calculations. P is equal to P of tails times P of heads is equal to 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.25. To better understand the probability, let us analyze the first example. Helen plays basketball. For free throws, she makes the shot 75% of the time. Helen must now attempt two free throws. The probability that Helen makes the first shot is 0 
The probability that Helen makes the second shot is 0.75. The probability that Helen makes the second free throw given that she made the first is 0.85. What is the probability that Helen makes both free throws? Here is the answer for example number 1. Let C be the event that Helen makes the first shot. Let D be the event that Helen makes the second shot. P of C is equal to 0 0.75. P of D is equal to 0 0.75. P of D or Z is equal to 0 0.85. P of C and D is equal to P of D and C is equal to P of D or C or P of C is equal to 0 0.85 times 0 0.75 is equal to 0 0.6375. Helen makes the first and second free throws with probability of 0 0.6375. Let's come now to the second group which is the addition rule. P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. If A and B are mutually exclusive events or those that cannot occur together, then the third term is zero and the rule reduces to P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B. For example, you can flip a coin and have it come up both heads and tails on one toes. Example, Klaus is trying to choose where to go on vacation. His two choices are A, New Zealand, and B is Alaska. Klaus can only afford one vacation. The probability that he chooses A as P of A is equal to 0 0.6 and the probability that he chooses B as P of B is equal to 0 0.35. P of A and B is equal to 0 because Klaus can only afford to take one vacation. Therefore, the probability that he chooses either New Zealand or Alaska is P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.35 is equal to 0 0.95. Note that the probability that he does not choose to go anywhere on vacation must be 0 0.05. The next topic that we are going to discuss is the contingency tables. What is a contingency table? In statistics, a contingency table, also known as a cross tabulation or cross tab, is a type of table in a matrix format that displays the multivariate frequency distribution of the variables. They are heavily used in survey research, business intelligence, engineering, and scientific research. Contingency tables are tools used by statisticians when they need to make sense of data that has more than one variable. The term contingency table was first used in 1904 by Carl Persson, an English mathematician who is credited with launching the study of mathematical statistics. One of the difficulties in attempting to decipher data that has more than one variable is finding the structure of the data. Using a contingency table allows the statistician to better understand the data using probability and relative frequencies. A contingency table is a tabular representation of categorical data. A contingency table usually shows frequencies for particular combinations of values of two discrete random variables, x and y. Each cell in the table represents a mutually exclusive combination of x 
y values. For example, consider a sample of n is equal to 200 bird drinkers. For each drinker, we have information on sex, variable x, taking on two possible values, male and female. And preferred category of beer, variable y, taking on three possible values, light, regular, dark. A contingency table for th this data might look like the following. The table shows the X and Y were in. On the X, we have male and female. And on the Y, we have the categories light, regular, dark, and the total. For male, we have 20 for the light, 40 regular, 50 for dark. A total of 110. For the female, we have 50 for the light, 20 regular, 20 dark, a total of 90. The sum total of light for male and female is 70. For the regular, 40 and 20 is 60. Dark, 50 and 20, 70. With a grand total of 200. This is a two-way, two-by-three contingency table, two rows and three columns. Sometimes, three-way and more contingency tables are used. Suppose the beer drinker's data, besides sex and preference, are also stratified by age group. The third discrete variable, Z, or the age, in this case, might for example, take on four values, 65. In this case, we would have a three-way, two-by-three-by-four contingency table equivalent to four two-way, two-by-three contingency tables, one two-by-two table for each of the four age groups. Example number two. Suppose there are two variables, sex, male or female, and handedness, right or left handed. Further, suppose that 100 individuals are randomly sampled from a very large population as part of a study of sex differences in handedness. A contingency table can be created to display the numbers of individuals who are male right-handed and left-handed. Female right-handed and left-handed, such a contingency table is shown below. On this table, you can see the handedness by sex, male and female. And we have right-handed and left-handed. For male, we have 43 right-handed and 9 left-handed with a total of 52. For female, we have 44 right-handed and 4 left-handed with a total of 48. The total of right-handed individuals are 87 and for the left-handed is 13. The grand total of the individuals are 100. The numbers of the males, females, and right and left-handed individuals are called marginal totals. The grand total, the total number of individuals represented in the contingency table, is the number in the bottom right corner. The table allows users to see at a glance that the proportion of men who are right-handed is about the same as the proportion of women who are right-handed although the proportions are not identical. 
The strength of the association can be measured by the odds ratio and the population odds ratio estimated by the sample odds ratio. The significance of the difference between the two proportions can be assessed with a variety of statistical tests including person's chi-squared test and the G-test, Fisher's exact test, Bush closed test, and Barnard's test, provided the entries in the table represent individuals randomly sampled from the population about which conclusions are to be drawn. If the proportions of individuals in the different columns vary significantly between rows or vice versa, it is said that there is a contingency between the two variables. In other words, the two variables are not independent. If there is no contingency, it is said that the two variables are independent. The example above is the simplest kind of contingency table, a table in which each variable has only two levels. This is called a 2 by 2 contingency table. In principle, any number of rows and columns may be used. There may also be more than two variables, but higher order contingency tables are difficult to represent visually. The relation between ordinal variables or between ordinal and categorical variables may also be represented in the contingency tables, although such a practice is rare. To sum up, the multiplication rule and the addition rule are used for computing the probability of A and B, as well as the probability of A or B for two given events, A, B, defined on the sample space. A contingency table provides a way of portraying data that can facilitate calculating probabilities. The table helps in determining conditional probabilities quite easily. The table displays sample values in relation to two different variables that may be dependent or contingent on one another. That would be all and thank you for listening.